Hi, in this video I will show you how to make something like this in Plasticity. Here I needed to create a box. This is a container for used coffee so that we can easily dispose of the coffee after brewing it from the portafilter. I made this box for 3D printing in Plasticity. Now let's switch to a new window in Plasticity and I'll show you how to approach designing such a part. Of course I won't be making exactly the same part, but we'll make something similar. Let's start by creating a cube. Select the center box command here. To select this command, hover your cursor over this spot, press and hold the left mouse button, and then hover over this icon. Now, hover over the origin of the coordinate system and click the left mouse button to place the center of this cube here. For the dimensions of the cube, enter 120 by 120 millimeters. I know it's a square, while it was a rectangle, but I'm doing this on purpose because I want to show you a few features of plasticity along the way. Now, for the height we'll enter 40 millimeters, so I press the H key and type in 40, press enter to confirm, and enter again to end this command. Now, let's add fillets to the corners of this cube. Let's switch to edge selection mode and, by holding the shift key, select four edges of this cube. Here, we'll add a fillet with a value of 25 millimeters, so I press D, type 25, enter, and enter again to confirm. Now let's switch to face selection mode, which means I press the three key on the keyboard, select this face, and choose the hollow solid command. Let's create a body with walls of five millimeters thickness. So I press D and type minus five to ensure the walls are added inwards. I click OK to confirm. Now we will create another part of the solid. We will do this on this face, select this face and press the space bar so that this face becomes a construction plane. Here, select the circle drawing tool and place the center of the circle at this point. For the diameter of the circle, let's enter for example 35 millimeters. These dimensions don't matter much, I'm just doing it in this way so that it visually looks quite good. To set the diameter of the circle, I press the tab key and type 35 and press enter. Now let's add a mirror of this circle. I select the mirror command and add the mirror in this way. Click OK and close the temporary construction plane. So now I have two such circles. Now when I select the circle, the entire circle will be selected, which is why I select this face and return to this construction plane. I can select these two areas. Now when I select these two areas, the extrude command has been activated here. However, as you can see, I can't do anything here. I can't rotate this solid, but when I close this plane, the selection will be cancelled. Let's prepare the geometry so that we can select a segment of the circle. That's why I select this face again, press the spacebar, and we'll create a line like this. OK, right click to cancel that and mirror it to create a line on the other side. I click OK, and now I'll trim the segments of the circles. OK, we have such geometry. I close the construction plane. Now, holding the shift key, I select these two areas, and I would like to add an extrusion to this face. We can do this so that we press the control key and drag to this point. An extrusion will automatically be added to the point where the cursor is, that is, when we hold down the control key, we can simply use a snap and add an extrusion to this edge. Release the cursor, release the control key, and we have such solids. Here, it has been created as separate solids, but we can easily combine them. Select all solids with the control key, press the Q key, press Q again to activate the union operation, and click OK to confirm. Next, I select all flat geometries and click the eye icon next to one of them to turn off the visibility of those flat geometries. Now I switch to edge selection, which means I press the two key on the keyboard, and with the shift key, I select these edges. OK, these edges are invisible in this view, but we have X-ray mode enabled and we can select these edges. 
I also select this edge with the shift key to ensure that all these edges are selected and I add some rounding here. Let's do this with a radius of 20 millimeters. So I press D, type 20, enter and enter to confirm and we have something like this. Now we will create another solid. We will create this part and let's do it in such a way that we create this part somewhere next to it. I'll switch to the top view and here I'll draw a circle. The position of this circle doesn't matter much. Let's do it this way. Let's create a circle with a diameter of 20 millimeters. Okay, and now let's draw a rectangle. Just select rectangle drawing from the center. So we hover the cursor over this spot, press and hold the left mouse button, and then hover the cursor over this spot and choose the center of the rectangle to be the center of the circle. Now draw a rectangle with dimensions of 20 by 20, that is draw a square with a side of 20 millimeters. To set the dimensions, press the tab key. Now let's move this square, activate the move command, that is press the G key and move this in the Y axis by minus 5 millimeters. So I press the Y key then minus 5 to specify the displacement value and press enter to confirm and then enter again to end this command. Now I choose the geometry trimming command and trim unnecessary segments of the geometry. Okay, and we have something like this. Now I switch to area selection. Select this area, and here I add an extrusion of 120 millimeters. So I press D, type 120, hit enter and enter again, and we have something like this. This part will indeed be printed in this way. Now, let's add more elements to this part. We'll create a sketch on this face, select this face, press the spacebar, and here I'll choose rectangle drawing from the center. I will draw a rectangle that will have its center at this point. It will be a rectangle with dimensions. I press the tab key. Here this dimension is 5 next tab key and this dimension is 10. Enter. Now I'll move this rectangle down by 5 millimeters. So I activate the move command. I press the G key on the keyboard. And here, this is the Z axis. So I press Z minus 5, hit enter and enter again to confirm. Now I select the mirror command and add a mirror of this rectangle to get this rectangle on this side and click OK. I close the temporary construction plane. Now, with the shift key, I select these two areas and add an extrusion of five millimeters here. So I press D, type five. Hit enter, enter again, and we have something like this. New solids have been created here. During the extrusion, it could have been created in such a way that these solids were joined with this solid, but now we can switch to body selection. With the shift key, select this solid so that these three are selected. Then I press the Q key and press Q again to activate the union operation and click OK to confirm. I select the flat geometries and turn off their visibility. Now, this part will be printed this way. As for this fragment of the solid, it will print without any problems. But here we might have a minor issue because we don't have any support here. Let's switch to edge selection, select this edge and add some rounding here. Let's add a rounding with a radius of 15 millimeters. So I press the D key and type 15 to create something like this. And now we have support here, it will print correctly. And okay, we have such a solid. And now I would like to move this solid onto this solid to later use the operation of subtracting one solid from the other to create a groove here. First, let's rotate this solid 90 degrees. Switch to solid selection, select this solid and activate the rotate command. So press the R key. Let's rotate it 90 degrees around the X axis. 
Here, I just type in the value 90, OK, hit enter, and enter again to confirm. Now let's move this solid over this solid. This solid is selected. I activate the move command, so I press the G key on the keyboard. And here, I would like to move this solid so that the center of this edge lies on the center of this edge. Now I activate the freestyle command. Select the midpoint of this edge, and now this solid is attached to this point. I place this solid in the middle of this edge, and OK, we have something like this. This solid is positioned above this solid. Now we can specify the displacement in the z axis so that this solid enters a bit into this solid to create a groove here. We can make this a bit deeper. Let's do it at minus 15 millimeters. Hit enter and enter again, and OK, we have something like this. Now we will subtract this smaller solid from the larger solid with the shift key. First select the larger solid, then select this solid, and activate the boolean command by pressing the Q key on the keyboard. Here we are subtracting one solid from the other, but if you click OK now, this solid will be removed. This solid will be needed, so we click Keep Tools here so that this solid is not removed and click OK. Now I select this solid, activate the Move command by pressing the G key on the keyboard and drag this upward so that this solid does not block my view, and I click OK. We have something like this. Now, if we left the solids this way, it's possible that this solid wouldn't enter this solid because if we printed it, it might be a bit too tight here. Therefore, let's widen this groove. I switch to face selection. First, I select this face and drag it down to remove this fillet. I click OK and select this face, move it in this direction, and click OK. And here we'll just do it by removing this face. And now, holding the Shift key, select these faces, since these faces will be moved by the same value. And here as an offset, we'll set minus half a millimeter. Half a millimeter is quite a large value. When we pull it back half a millimeter in this direction, and half a millimeter in the other direction, this part will fit here with considerable play. But that's of no concern. Having a larger clearance here will be a better solution. And here we also move it back by half a millimeter. Now let's also move this face back by one millimeter so that there is some clearance here. We don't need this to be tight. This is not a precise model. This part is supposed to fit loosely into this groove. Okay, now I'll switch to edge selection and holding the shift key, I select these edges. Here, we will also add a chamfer. So I press the C key, type one, press enter and enter again. And we have added chamfers. Now, I would like to show you one more interesting thing regarding plasticity. This box is definitely too small. If we print something like this, and it's supposed to serve its purpose, that is, to facilitate the removal of brewed coffee from the portafilter, unfortunately, the coffee will spill out of the box, and it won't fulfill its function. This box needs to be slightly enlarged on one side. In plasticity, we can do this very easily. Let's switch to face selection. And with the shift key, select these faces. Okay, we have something like this. Now activate the move command. So press the G key on the keyboard and see what happens when I drag along the X axis. I can simply enlarge this box by any value. For example, I'll increase it by 60 here. I press enter, enter again to confirm, and we have something like this. Now this box will serve its function. If you want to export this for printing, select the solid you want to export and choose export from the menu. Then specify the file format. I exported it to the step format, enter a name, 
and click Save. And do the same with the second solid, export it to the step format. Then load both solids into the software where you prepare the files for 3D printing and set up the print program with the parameters appropriate for the material you will be printing with. I printed such a box with PETG material and it serves its function. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel.